Hallelujah. All right, today we're going um, to we're going to go through some passages, actually several passages of scripture, and it's with some intent. Um, for those of y'all who don't know, I, I've been uh, well. Everybody knows me, right? The Kenneth Prime. But I've been teaching through the, the the Samuel Scrolls for a long time. I've been doing a series through uh, First and Second Shemuel. And uh, I am just amazed at how many nuggets the Most High has packed into those, those books, right? Uh, and, 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 and so today, I'm actually going to go through something that I've already gone through in the series. And anybody want to know what that is, let me know later. But, but something that um, I didn't cover in the series that I think will be a great benefit for, for us. And that reminds me of something else I wanted to say, but, you know, I really appreciate being here with everyone uh, during this time. Uh, Nibia and I, Maisha, we were talking, and one of the things that we, uh, that came up regarding the, the fellowship was that, you know, in a real way, this is practice for community living or, or even readiness for the kingdom. And, and, and so, you know, these seven, eight days that we're together, you know, we're gonna we're, we're have we're having the opportunity to interoperate in a way that we don't when we're on the phone, we're on Zoom meetings, and when, et cetera, et cetera. And it's been a beauty for me to see it flowing like it's flowing, uh, and it's been eye-opening to see some of the the, the challenges. But I don't, we were, when we were talking, we could only sort of like imagine like, well, what if you know. We were all together all the time, right? And so all of the challenges we'd have to deal with and all of the blessings we'd experience, at, at any rate, this is a great opportunity for us to see what it's like being amongst each other because our houses are close to each other. You know, this morning, uh, 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 somebody, uh, and I'm not pointing fingers, this is not an issue. It was no issue. It says, hey, can we have a couple eggs? It's like, sure, you know, and it was like, what's mine is yours and we're kind of flowing together and this is beautiful. I mean, this this is this is how it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. You know, this this is how it's supposed to be, and so I bless the Most High for that. Um, and this this message we're going to start off. Uh, Maurice accepted my offer to uh, to do some reading for me and to interact. So it's going to be a little tag team in here. So y'all get a double a double shotgun approach here, right? So preferably the Most High. <laughs> Uh, will flow through that real, real well. Uh, I, I'm sure he will. Um, but I'm going to start off with just some comments from uh, from, from my notes, and I, I'm going to ask a question. So, if you've ever had been in a situation where you had to rebuke, correct, chastise someone who had done or was doing the issue you had to rebuke or chastise about was something that you had done before. Uh, for, for instance, you know, like if you were a thief and you catch somebody stealing, right? And, and et cetera. And as I went through this idea, I realized that there was some challenges and there was a blessing there. So this message is really about identifying the challenges and knocking them down so that we can see the, the blessing of, how about this, the currency that we get from something that we've experienced and bring it to bear for good. So that, that's the idea of the, of the message. Um, and we're gonna use several scriptures to sort of walk through this like a case study. All right, so said we're gonna to go to Shemuel. How many, can I get a show of hands? Who, who thinks they're kind of familiar with Shemuel? All right, a few people. All right, all right. So, yeah, I'm going to quiz you and score you and give prizes. <laughs> so, so uh, um, how many people think they're familiar with the story of David and Bathsheba? Oh, y'all don't want to participate because I know y'all know David and Bathsheba. All right, then. All right. All right. So. I'll leave y'all alone and I'll just teach and let, let it get caught where it get caught. I mean, because it's, you know, it's a loaded question. That's no, 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 it really isn't. It, it just helps me, it, it just helps me to understand how much I need to go and, 
and go through in order to make sure that this kind of like this this ground is broken up properly to accept the seeds. If you you say I never heard of David and Bathsheba, then I got to read all of Second Samuel chapter twelve. And so and so I didn't want to do that because I thought y'all probably know that story a little bit. All right. So I was just thinking about meditating this in this in, in, in Second Samuel and specifically in Second Samuel chapter thirteen. So if you could pull that up for me, Aki. Um, Just a second. So I don't actually want to read it yet. So, T, the other day you said something about about the mercy or what was that that David got? Because he should have died. Remember that question? Grace and mercy. Yeah. And and so, just as a as a as a sound check. So David has stolen somebody's wife, and he's killed her. I mean, killed him, the man whose wife she was, and she's pregnant. And the Most High sends the prophet, anybody know his name? Nathan. Nathan. Sends the prophet Nathan to David and gives him this sort of parabolic view of what he did. And, and David is like convicted to his heart and the Most High kills the baby that, that Bathsheba is, 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 is carrying. Uh, uh, I guess not instantly because he was born and then he dies. And then what the Most High said through Nathan was a series of judgments that manifest in the next few chapters. Uh, it's not as rapid as we can turn the page because it's actually a couple years that this happens, a couple years that that happens. But here, here's the deal. Here's the reason I'm going through that. Because David has done this atrocious sin and there's a nature to this sin that he's done. And what happens next is where the message really starts to blossom. So let, let's, let's go there. Nathan said to, to David, after he had revealed that he, what he did, he, he said that he would not die. But what David had said in his own judgment was that something that comes out of Shemot chapter 22, verse 1, if you could pull it out for me. Exodus chapter 22, verse 1. <clears throat> Exodus 22 verse 1 when a man steals an ox or a sheep and shall slaughter it or sell it he repays five cattle for an ox and four sheep for a sheep all right so so what David said remember the parable was that there was this guy you know he, he had a lot of sheep and then you know his buddy came to town and he went and he went and took somebody else's sheep and killed it to prepare the meal for his buddy and David's like, that's a wicked, wicked move. And so, and so the, 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 the reason I read Shemot chapter 22 is because the Torah has something to say about it. And that we judged himself in the midst of what he, what he had said. Like I said to you uh, the other day, four souls get affected by this. Three absolutely dead and one sort of ruined because of what that we did. I'm digging a hole here for Dawid on purpose, so hang in here with me. So, so, so Dawid is the king of Israel, and all of us who are familiar with the Torah enough know that the king of Israel had to write the, the Torah out himself, right? That was his responsibility to write it and to read it so that he could rule from that perspective. In other words, he was renewing his mind just like we're supposed to renew our mind, right? And, and he was to be, he was the, 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 only as person that I can remember, y'all can fact check me on this, where the scripture says he was a man after Yahuwah's heart. So, so if if a if a if a man who don't know the Most High have no knowledge of the scriptures, living out in the world, he's a wild man, a cave dweller, or whatever, and he does something that's wicked, is one thing. But when a man who's after the Most High's heart, who has written the Torah out with his own hands, who's gone through all of these series of things with the Most High and built up this great testimony, when he does a thing, it seems worse. Amen? So I'm done digging the, do the, 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 hit, the, 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 the ground up for, for Dawid. But one, what happens next 
is Amon, uh, or Amnon, I'm sorry. Amnon is Dawid's uh, firstborn son. He's the heir to the kingdom. And he has this lust problem. Hold up, what did Dawid do? Oh, he had a lust problem. So Amnon's got this lust problem and he's lusting after his own sister and he, and he takes her and he throws her back. And when this happens, we don't see that we do anything. Let's look at a few passages in the scripture. Second Samuel chapter 13, we're gonna go. I should have brought my mouse, because I can't even. Where you at? Read from verse 1. Verse 1. And after this, it came to be that Absalom, son of David, had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, son of David, loved her. And Amnon was distressed even to become sick because of his sister, Tamar. For she was a maiden, and it was hard in the eyes of Amnon to do whatever to her. And Amnon had a friend whose name was Yonadab, son of Shema, David's brother. Now, Yonadab was a very wise man. And he said to him, why are you, the sovereign's son, becoming thinner day after day? He explained it to me. And Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Yonadab said to him, lie down on your bed and pretend to be sick. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, please let my sister Tamar come and give me food and make the food before my eyes so that I see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the sovereign came to see him, Amnon said to the sovereign, please let Tamar, my sister, come take a couple of cakes for me before my eyes so that I eat from her hand. So pause right there. And, and so and so, what we see is this, this lust of the eye, lust of the flesh thing operating in, in, in Amnon. And it's ridiculously strong. His, his buddy is seeing him thin. He, he ain't even eating right because of it, right? I mean, that, that's, that's pretty severe. But what I want to do is I want to map back to Dawid and what they never told us. So, so it's, it's a little bit of speculation, but again, give me a little latitude. Dawid, you know, he, when he saw uh, Bathsheba, he must have felt like he had to have her because of what he went through. And so here's my theory on food after his kind all over again. So now he's got this lust problem that's ridiculous, and his son has got it maybe even at another level. And, and, and he goes and does what he does, which I'll have the brother read a couple of verses from what, what, what went down there. So go down to verse number, uh, read eight through 12, please. Verse eight. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and while he was lying down, and she took dough and kneaded it and made cakes before his eyes and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and turned them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, make everyone go away from me. And they all went out from him. And Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food into the bedroom that I eat from your hand. And Tamar... <laughs> and Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them to Amnon, her brother, in the bedroom. And she brought them to him to eat, and he took hold of her hand and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. Pause for a second. So remember up at the top, up, the, up top, he says, My brother Absalom's sister. 
And here he says his sister, and this is a nuance, but, but, but it seems like to me, he goes in and out of what the reality is here. And this is part of the process of how people, including anyone else, other than this, this guy here, get caught up in sin. They, they, they start to like slice and dice things in a way that, that makes them uh, less culpable to the thing that's drawing them close to themselves. So that's just a side nugget. Continue, Aki. Right. Amen. 12. And she answered him, No, my brother, do not humble me, for it is not done so in Israel. Do not do this wickedness. All right. So, so we, we find out um, Read through 15, Aki. And, uh, oh, 13. And I, and I, where could I take my shame? And you, you would be like one of the fools in Israel. And now please speak to the sovereign, for he would not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he humbled her and lay with her. Amnon then hated her, Exceedingly, so that he, so that the hatred uh, with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, "Arise, go." So pause right there, and I wanted to read that because of this. This once he conquered the thing he was after, it became distasteful for him because this happens oftentimes because something was driving it in the first place that that was wicked and 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 now you're looking at it and you're seeing wickedness and he's like oh my goodness I, I don't even want you get away from me now some people might say well maybe oh, I want to go down that path let's turn to bear sheet 34 for a minute we're going to come back here mm. what was it? 34, Genesis 34, we're going to read uh, 1 through 3 for now. 1 through 3. Yes, sir. Genesis 34, verse 1. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And Shechem, son of Kamar, the Hewite, prince of the land saw her and took her and lay with her and humbled her. Mm -hmm. And his being clung to Dina, the daughter of Yaakov, and he loved the girl and spoke kindly to the girl. So, so the contrast here is that, is that, you know, some of the same stuff's going on, but maybe this was the way of the Hittites, you know? Maybe that's how they rolled. Maybe that was acceptable to them because he, 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 he wanted her. And, and it's kind of disappointing in one way because whenever I see um, someone outside of the kingdom behaving in a way that seems superior to somebody in the kingdom I feel embarrassed like like when I see a Buddhist at peace right I'm like man and, and the Israelites can't even get along I, I, our father is the father of I mean, our king is the king he's Sar Shalom he's the, and here we got these people over here who don't know them, who reject them wholeheartedly, and yet they're doing better at it than we are. This is it's, it's terrible. So anyway, go down to verse number uh, 25 in, Ge in Genesis 34 and read from there, bro, 25 through 31. Uh, verse 25, and it came to be on the third day when they were in pain that two of the sons of Yaakov, uh, Shimon, Shimon, Shim Shimon and Lewi, Dina's brother, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the men. Pause. So I, I cut out a little bit, but what went down is they convinced him to be circumcised. Now on the third day, they're in terrible pain and, 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 they, and they rushed in upon him. This is an amazing story for a lot of different reasons, but the two of them only went and killed all these cats. And that's pretty phenomenal. Go on now. Uh, 26. And they killed uh, Hamar and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and took 
Dina from Shechem's house and went out. You said to verse uh, 31. The sons of Yaakov came upon the slain and plundered the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their flocks and their herds and their donkeys and that which was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives they took captive and they plundered all that was in the houses. And Yaakov said to Shimon and Levi, you have troubled me by making me a stench among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites, among the Perizzites, and I am few in number. They shall gather themselves against me and shall strike me, and I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, should he treat our sister like a whole? Hallelujah. Not hallelujah that they did it, but hallelujah the word of Elohim. And so I see a couple of things in here. One is that, um, you know, Israel, Israel is no stranger to being the, the what do they call it? The minority. <laughs> and the impact that being the minority can have on you is that you might feel weak to do even what's right. But Shimon and Levi, they took care of this thing. And Dawid, the king of Israel, his daughter is taken by his son. And so far, he ain't, he ain't did nothing. Turn it up. High, high as you need to, bro. Number one. Is that better? Shalom, shalom. Mic one. You need me to do it? Is that, is that better? Louder? All right. So, so Dawid's not doing, doing anything. Um, so he, here's some of my thoughts about what Dawid situation is. Why, why, well, why, why is he not dealing with his household? Well, what's the problem here? So, because, you know, he can't, you can't, if, if you break a glass, I knocked this over and it's made out of glass, right? I can't sit there and say oops and just leave it. I gotta pick up the pieces and we don't see that we doing this. And I'm a little disappointed if I can put it that way, right? But but I but I think that there's some sort of particular kinds of reasons that bring this kind of behavior about. Again, imagine if you're a crackhead. And then you're, you're, you stop and your children become crackheads. How you deal with that? Because they look at you and say, but you do it or you did it. In this situation, Am Amnon had all of that am ammunition. Are y'all with me? So, so the whole country by now probably knows what that we did. <laughs> and, and so, and so what, what I'm seeing is how this situation is giving us a picture in how hypocrisy weakens our testimony. If, if we do a thing and then we try to call somebody out for it, you know, internally, you know, we, we, we often are challenged and externally they laugh at you. It's like, well, what are you talking about? You know, I saw you stealing yesterday, dude. Your Say again? So with your tassel. Oh man, with your tassel on, right? <laughs> And, and so, and so, how how can how, how much more important does this make for us to walk the straight line? But like any good person who learns how to walk on ice in the winter up north, every now and then you still slip. And if you slip, is one thing. But if you like sloppy bop 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 all the time, is a whole nother thing. So there's a call there for us to tighten up our own uh, walk, but Dawi's already done it, so it's too late to tell him to fix that. So remember uh, Cain who killed Adam's son, second son, Habel or Abel. You, you don't, you don't, you don't. Some of that could be seen as Adam's fault. Some of what, some of what. Amnon's doing, you can say, well, if you back up a little bit, you see that 
some of this had to play out because the Most High had already made a declaration. I guess what I'm trying to say, set of our ones, must be us. At any rate, um, what I'm trying to say is that in addition to this theme of the hypocrisy that Dawid may have been hesitant to, to rebuke his son about, or, or, or that led him to be hesitant to do that, there's the most highest theme that's interacting with humans just like it always does. In other words, what Amnon did was judgment on Dawid's house. So, 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 so Dawid's getting sliced there, and the question in my mind is like, what do I do when the thing that I've done has brought calamity upon myself and upon my people, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then I see it rinsed and repeated in someone who is close to me, my brother, my sister, my children, et cetera. What do I do? Do I say, well, you know, I did it. And in, in Dawid's case, to, to T's point the other day, it almost seemed like he got away with it. It almost seemed like the Most High gave him a pass. Now, he didn't give him a pass, but it almost seems like it. So now, here I am. I committed this gross sin, and the Most High has seemed to give me a pass on it, didn't kill me. And now you do this sin, and I'm going to tell you, hey, you dirty, riding sinner. That's one extreme that we find people doing. The other extreme is that we find people saying, well, you know, since I got a pass, I give you a pass. Have, have you ever heard people say, I think Jesse Jackson, uh, they found out he had a daughter out of wedlock or whatever, and he stood up and he says, you know, let him without sin cast the first stone. <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, might not remember that, but that's what happened, right? And so that's the other extreme, right? But neither one of those is right, even though both of those are pretty easy to do. And, and I guess there's a good time to say that the, what the Most High calls us to do is never easy to your flesh. And so, Dawid says nothing. And then Absalom, Tam, uh, 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 um, Tamar's brother, he steps up and um, he takes care of business. He waits two years, lays low, throws a little party, says, hey, can you, can you let Amnon come to the party, Abba? And he says, yeah, what do you want to do that for? He says, we're just having some good time threshing the fields and stuff. And he lets them there and he gets them drunk and they, they kill him, right? So let's talk about some scenarios. And, and I'm going to welcome you all to, to, to chime in on some of this part because th these are just my thoughts um, in terms of how that we could have dealt with it because if we can if we can noodle this if we can let how show us exactly what the heart of the matter is here then i think we can do a better job of dealing with these situations all right so i i believe that we should have been transparent and he could have let his own drama empower him to deal with the problem that his son was having. I think, I think that sometimes, you know, as parents, as teachers, as preachers, Maureen, Zakin, et cetera, et cetera, um, not only, and you said something yesterday uh, about how people see who you are now, they don't know what you've been through. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we, 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 instead of use our testimony, we kind of, hide it a little bit. <laughs> They're like, oh, I don't know why I know that I was an axe murderer back in the day, whatever, right? <laughs> so, 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 so when we do that, we, we lose the strength of ministering to an axe murderer or a potential axe murderer. We lose the strength of being able to relate to them. We lose the strength of having compassion on this situation because when I was an ax murderer, I didn't know no better. I was just a wild man, right? But how Ruach came in and convicted me and began to teach me and told me, et cetera, it's different, amen? And so, you know, I'm joking with the ax murderer, but fill in the blank. 
Because, because, because whoever is in the situation you are in, in some ways, is waiting for you or someone like you to reach in and pull them out. So, so you know, my history is nasty, raggedy, ugly. But I can't tell you how many times the most I use that to be able to reach in and say, hey, man, I know where there's a, a relief from that foolishness. I know where there's some light that dispels that darkness. This ain't about me, but just in general, this concept is what I would have loved to have seen that we do. I'm making that part up, right? But, but the, I'm trying to make the point that if he was transparent, you know, he could have dealt with his own son. He could have maybe softened the blow a little bit, put a buffer between his people and the Most High. Because if I let you go and do your thing, then, you know, whether the Most High have mercy upon you, that's between you and him. But when people's hearts change, when they see their own sin, the Most High reacts to that usually with mercy. All right, so let's go to um, oh, there was a point I wanted to make about this this um, this Deborahim chapter. I'm sorry, this Shemot chapter. We don't have to go back there. I, I think. Uh, it's actually white, but Leviticus 20, 20, 19 and 29. Can you just read that I don't think we did read that. 20, 19. I'm sorry, Leviticus 19 and 29. Leviticus 19 and 29. Leviticus 19 and 29. Yes, sir, one verse. <clears throat> Do not profane your daughter by making her a whore so that the land does not bore and the land becomes filled with wicked. Yeah, so the, the version, another version says, do not prostitute your daughter and cause, I think this is the KJV, cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall into whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. And it's like, well, what is this word prostitute? Because when I think of 21st century prostitute, you know, we think of one thing. And the words halal in, 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 the Greek, in Hebrew, and, and what it means is what that version actually said, which is to defile. So any flavor of defilement is filling in this blank. And, and, and that means that, that the Most High is not just angry at the one, the woman, the strip woman of the, what do they call them, woman of the night? I don't know, whatever, right? Street walkers, right? He's not just angry at them. He's angry at every flavor of defilement that, that you would teach your children to do or teach the children of Israel to do or give them a pass on. And, and I just want everyone to ask themselves, don't even, don't even answer me and don't get mad at me, but, but, but ask yourselves, is it okay for your brother to rebuke you? All right, I gave you enough time to think about it. This is a challenge because, because this is a challenge. Yeah, I know it's the win. It's the win of hallelujah. Hallelujah. But 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 what what I'm drilling at here is that the two sides to this coin. Because when you develop a relationship with your brother or with your sister or with your Maureen or whatever you develop a relationship with, where you're convinced of your loving covenant relationship with them, it should actually be your expectation that they look after you a bit. You, you, you. So again, another quick Ephraim testimony. A brother said to me one time, I was talking to him about something, and he said to me, I knew there was something wrong with you all the time. I'd known him for two years. And I says, what's wrong with me? And he says, I kind of just sucked his teeth. Yeah, I knew it was something with you all the time. And, and, and I was like, bro. I've been hanging out with you for two years, and man, I could have died and went to hell when you knew two, something was wrong with me, and you weren't going to tell me about it? What kind of brother stuff is that? And he's on a high horse. I hadn't done anything wrong. But, 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 but an issue came up that he didn't like. 
And now I always knew something was wrong with you. And I never forgot that because I was thinking, is that the way we roll? Because if you knew something was wrong, I ain't talking about you don't like the fact that I wear, you know, these seats and you wear fringes. That, that ain't nothing wrong with me on that one. But, but, but if you, you catch my eyes wandering in the wrong direction, you see me at the store and I'm like looking around, I do like this. You, you, if you catch me doing this stuff and you say nothing to me, what's wrong with you? Now, now part of it I know that people scared. Cause, cause, cause if you say something to him, he'll be like, you know, who made you the Elohim over me? Or, you know, blah, 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 blah. But we got to start somewhere, set up our ones. And, and so, and so whatever the answer to that question was, whether it was like 10, absolutely they can rebuke me. Nine, yeah, they can rebuke me, but eight, you know, on down the list, right? All, all the way down to, don't be trying to tell me nothing. You just need to, you and Haluach need to work that out because we already know what the answer should be. And, 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 and it doesn't matter if I'm terrible at, at fishing and I tell you that your bowling is off. You, you get me? <laughs> See, because cause, cause even in, you know, husbands and wives sometimes, you know, you find tit for tat stuff. But you do such and such and such, but that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm telling you about. Well, it's not salvation level. It, what, it, what, how do you call that? It's not something. Salvation issue. It's not a salvation issue. Thank you, brother. It's like, okay, you roll on that. You, you get out there on that edge, Mr. Not a salvation issue, until you just fall right off the cliff. Just remember, apostasy means that you once believed. What <laughs> once you once you were walking it out and you turned from it and forsook it. That's what apostasy means. It don't mean them people out there who was never in the kingdom. Alright. So let's go to uh, something in the Brook Shah, which I think kind of sums this up, wraps this up a little bit. Um, and it's one of the letters from Shaul. Um, Galatians chapter chapter 6 let's read 1 through let's read 1 first and then we'll take a quick quick comment and go from there Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 brothers if a man is overtaken in some trespass you the spiritual ones Set such a one straight in a spirit of meekness, looking at yourself, lest you be tried too. Amen. And so now we see how, how sin and faults are, are, are trying to infiltrate us. If I, if, I, if I get a pass on some junk that I'm doing, then it's, it's like you want to pass on some junk you're doing. Before you know it, we look just like the world. Sometimes I see that, you know, so it's kind of scary. And it's like, well, well, what's the remedy? The remedy is, you know, if you see someone overtaken in a fall, you know, set them straight in the spirit of meekness. <laughs> I just, it, I, it's interesting when we look at um, these things. It's like when we're in the assembly of Messiah, it's like the default should be like, you know, it should be righteousness. But it's like unless somebody is able to be seen in a perfect light, it's like it discredits. I'm saying this is the way, this is the, the, uh, the dysfunctional way that we do things. If you try to tell me something, but there's something, it don't even gotta be that thing. If something I can look at you and say, well, you do this thing, it, it like it discredits your ability to be able to say, you ain't perfect. I mean, so how you gonna like it's but it's a dysfunctional thing, but it's like everybody has to be kind of 
functioning in the spirit for the thing to even work. I, I think mean, it's inter I think when like when Yeshua talks about the beam and the and the speck, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a thing that kind of uh, like guards against that someone having something on you. Mm -hmm. If they got something on you, it, it like makes you not be able not to say that you can't judge them. But they can't receive your judgment yep. because yep. they can find a chink in your armor, so to speak. Amen. It's a but it's but the whole thing is a dysfunction. Amen. Because right is right. It doesn't matter really in reality if I'm not perfect. If, if I'm showing you something about you that's not perfect, it don't make it don't fix what you're doing. Amen. Amen. But in our carnal, you know, physical minds, that's how we think about things. You have to be. Like even when you were saying like how I'd like to hear, I'm just saying like me, I like to hear from a qualified person as it relates to whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I can't talk to you about fishing. It's like, yeah. If I say something to you is about fishing, it's something that somebody told me. Mm -hmm. I gotta hear it from somebody who got poles and got one of those little buckets with the holes in it. Where they, he put it in there with it. You know, so I gotta hear from somebody like that mm -hmm. because that's an expert. I mean, but like that's how we yeah. think across the board, which is right is right, but it's like there's these human elements that creep in that like messes things up. Yeah, yeah. And and I think it's I think it's a little bit beyond human sometimes. I think I think the enemy well I mean I think the enemy takes advantage of it, right? Mm -hmm. How about that? Whether, whether he's the author of it or whether he's just taking advantage of it, it, it weakens our ability to walk upright. And we all say we're committed to walking upright. Amen? Amen? I mean, that's what we want. So how about the amen on this one? And we all realize we still got work to do, right? Yeah. Amen? So when our brothers or our sisters are helping us, to try to sure up that work we're still doing, we should be grateful. Now, if they're reckless and it's like, you dirty stinking dog, blah, 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 blah. You ain't no believer if you did that. You know what about this? It's like, it's like crazy, because I always tell this story because when I grew up in the North, we used to like run down the street and slide on the ice in the winter on the way to school, right? And when I was really little, we didn't run down the street to salt because we fell all the time, right? But by the time you're in, you know, middle school, or if they call it that, uh, you can have fun, you know, just running in and sliding and running and sliding, but every now and then you will fall. And, and, and this kind of sin is an unintentional sin. That's the slip and fall thing. But people who, who are falling all the time they need help. And if you ain't gonna help them, how you, how you talking about you love them? How you, how you calling them brother and sister? How, how you calling them Isha and Isha, husband and wife? How you calling them your children and you don't rebuke them for the things that are going on? How, or what is, what's going on there? How can we expect a good end to that? So, so, so go on to Galatians 2, 4, please. Uh, oh, verse 2. Bear one another's burdens, and so complete the Torah of Messiah. Pause. So, so Shaul is, if we know the Galatians letter well enough, we know sometimes there's some confusion about it. And I'm not confused whatsoever. But what he just said is, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for you, and you're responsible for me at some level. At some level. Finding that level may be tricky. But if you don't reach for it, you'll never find it. Go on. Aki. For if anyone thinks himself to be somebody, when he is not, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he shall have boasting in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own burden. And let him who is instructed in the word share in all that is good with him who is instructing. Do not be led astray. Elohim is not mocked for whatever a man sows, 
that he shall also reap. Because he who sows to his own flesh shall reap corruption from the flesh, but he who sows to the Spirit shall reap everlasting life from the Spirit. And let us not lose heart in doing good, Amen. for in due season we shall reap if we do not grow weary. Amen. So then, as we have occasion, let us do good to all, especially to those who are in the household of the belief. Amen. So when I talk to uh, Israelites, I, and I talk to people who walk in this walk out, you know, they, 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 they understand that this book was written to a people first, right? And, and that those, those people are our real family. And those who walk in it and, and in belief are, if I can call it a next layer, our family. And, and so when he says, don't be mocked, I mean, Elohim's not mocked. We see this paint out in, in, in Amnon's life and death. We see this paint out. And maybe some of us have testimonies and stories that we can see it paint out around us or in our own lives. And I guess the whole point here is that if the buck's going to stop, you know, it'll stop quicker if you help. And you can never tell what person for a person to do how they respond uh, to to a call to repentance or, or change, etc. You can never tell exactly what they're going to do. Um, but just like in any area of this this walk, we 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 do what's right, and we let the Most High handle it from there. I mean. If, if, if we don't do that, then, then we're in trouble because we, we're not really doing, we're not helping. We're, we're just, we're just kind of, you know, maybe we got fire insurance in our mind. You know, we'll escape the, the pit. And, and I'm not sure you will or, 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 or any of us will, not to point at anybody other than, you know, all of us. So, so let us, you know, remember that. Our brothers, I mean, people ask that question. Uh, the king asks, I'm my, bro my brother's keeper. At some level, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you remember the Most High told us to be kind to strangers. He says, uh, remember you're in Mitzrayim. Um, remember the story of the Good Samaritan. The, the so-called golden rule. What's the golden rule, I keep? You know that one? The golden rule. Yeah, the golden rule. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Yeah, that one, right? Um, yeah, remember, initially it says, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath. You know that passage in one of those letters, it, it, it says something about uh, provoke one another to love. Anybody got thoughts on how you can provoke somebody to love? Because you probably know how to make each other pretty angry. <laughs> well, how do you provoke someone to love? With love. I got two hands. Go for it. Speak it. Just speak it out. So, you didn't hear that, Ebony? Barely. So, so what he said is that... He didn't say it real loud. He Moshe had provoked in the love through his persistence of showing in love and, and coming by and not, not letting them off the hook, right? 
until finally, you know, he felt like he started to reciprocate. So. And I'm going to say, bro, just a month ago, sometimes I see people who say, you come from a certain place outside of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, you know, certain vibes, you know, not showing each other, you know, you know, man. Yeah. You don't know how to get to our wives. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I understand that. What you got, sister? So, to this point you just made about the brethren, and, and, and I think it's because we've been bewitched, bro. I think it's because somebody has told us that, you know, that, that showing genuine love and compassion is a weakness. And, and it's, it's far from it. I mean, you know, back to, back to the, if I'll call it glory days for Dawid, when him and Yohanan made that covenant, he says that he loved them. <laughs> Like his own flesh. I mean, they 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 they, they were one as brothers, and you know, if somebody's just gave us some Kool Aid and we drank it, and we just need to stop because because your your brothers are. I mean, if we had to go to battle, <laughs> if we had to go to battle, we need our brethren. So what's the next part here? Guess what? We're in battle. We're in battle right now. And, and as far as I love towards our uh, showed or our sisters, our, our wives, I mean, I, I, I cannot forget that, you know, the first time I sat next to my wife, that it rang in my head, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Have I walked that out perfectly? No. But if, if, if she's a part of you, then how could you not show her love and kindness? And, 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 and so I just answered that question for myself as it came out of my mouth. Sometimes because we haven't learned how to or because we never seen it, right? We never seen it in action. You know, we come from homes we're broken or whatever the case is. Um, these barnacles get on our ship and we just we just don't know how to flow in that thing. Um, but you know, that's where prayer and consistent practice comes in at this so, so that we can finally show, you know, what we really uh, uh, believe. I was gonna say feel, but I think the belief is even stronger than feeling. And and, and the feelings are okay, okay, don't get me wrong. But but if I believe this is bone of my bone and flesh in my flesh. Well, I feel like it because, you know, when she be tripping, she don't feel like going on. Well, I'm dead. So my, <laughs> my, my point is, is that, you know, the, the feelings are inferior to a belief and a reality that this is the case. So, so um, I, I was just going to say that I always say this and my wife don't like when I talk about it. But when you think about love, it's a decision that you make on how you're going to deal with someone. And I think because we don't really think about what love is, it's maybe, well, you can't do, you can't love if you don't know what it is. And so if loving is like, you know, physical, like, you know, to whatever, whatever stuff. Yeah, right? if that's what love yeah. is, maybe that's why I can't love you because you know you know I'm a man. You don't roll like that. Love, you know what I'm saying? I love women. <laughs> but but if I understand it for what it is, is that I'm gonna treat you in a certain way with your good in mind okay. only. Okay. Regardless of the things that you do, because love is not reaction. So love don't have anything to do with what you've done. Okay. And I've decided that I wanted to treat you that way. Okay. And so if we understand what it is it helps us to be able to do it properly. I mean, and I think that's kind of what the, where the disconnect is, where we attach it to like the emotional kind of uh, the manifestation. Like if I want to treat someone, well, someone good, like you, there's things that you do, like you give them things or you mm -hmm. say things or whatever, but if the most high, if Elohim so loved the world, mm -hmm. come on, 
he did something as a result of the decision that he made to love the world. He did something. So the action that you are doing is connected to the decision that you have made on how you're going to deal with that person. And so if I love you and I see you about to jump off a cliff, I'm going to say, Hold up. Yeah, don't, don't jump off the cliff. Let's talk about this thing. Bro. Yeah, and, and also you were talking about saying something to someone. Mm -hmm. That relationship with love is like, I can't decide whether I'm going to say something to you or not based on what you're going, what I think you may say back to me. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking about the sowing and the reaping. The sower, he just threw the seed. Mm -hmm. And it landed wherever it landed. It may have landed in a good place. It may have not. I mean, but if you don't throw it, nothing's gonna happen. You I guarantee, hundred percent, nothing's gonna happen if you don't I throw mean. it. I mean. So I can't look and be like, well, if I sit up here and try to tell him about this thing that I know that he's doing, mm -hmm. he ain't gonna listen to me anyway. So I ain't even gonna say nothing. Mm -hmm. But that's not really acting in love because there's still a chance that they could be like, you know what, you're right. Yeah. Or even one day, right? And yeah, or, or come back to it in their mind, like, oh yeah, I remember you said this one thing. I mean, I mean, I mean. And so, and so, um, I th think that I think that's pretty much the message. Uh, the point, the point was just to put us on guard, so that you know we never let our own failures keep us from being a vehicle that the Most High can use to help tighten up the kingdom. And conversely, that, you know, we, we literally look for uh, that help. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's awesome when, you know, I'm looking at a Brother George right now, a couple weeks ago, you know, it wasn't a rebuke, but he, to, he told me something that was contrary to my thought. And, and I actually felt like, you know, no, man, you know, I'm going to do it like this, you know, and we kept talking, right? And, and this is the beauty of it, right? Because at some stage of development, you like, you don't want to even continue that conversation, but we kept hashing it out, hashing it out. And he kept, he kept tangling with me and tangling with me. And I said, you know what? There's some, there's some beauty to what you're saying. I hadn't let go of my idea completely, but I was like, there's some beauty to what you're saying. I, I get it. And quite honestly, I still wasn't ready to do it, but I was starting to see the beauty of what he was saying. And then I did. I hung up the phone from him. I said, oh, I don't want to talk to you no more. No, I didn't. I, we, we, uh, we got off the phone. <laughs> and, uh, and that thing and that beauty of what he said, it just kept working on my, my thoughts. And I was like, well, I, I didn't want to let mine go. And I was thinking, how can I incorporate that into what I was thinking? Or do I really need to let go of what? I was trying to merge it properly together. And I, and, and I said, well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that and plug it into my program here and what I'm, what I'm thinking. And it blessed me tremendously. So, so. Two is better than one, not just in marriages, but you know, when the brothers are together too, it's like, you gotta be, you gotta think that that brother is there for a reason and that the most high is wanting to use you all together, just like a liver and a kidney and a spleen and et cetera, different parts of the body. You gotta realize that's the setup. You know, I don't know, Kidneys and livers both do filtering, but I don't think in my in my belly they be arguing with each other about, <laughs> you know, they do they part of the filtering process. And they're depending upon each other. In fact, if one is gone bad, it makes it harder on the other one. And so we bear each other's burdens, we we try to do what's right, and we never want to let our past failures or even our current struggles keep us from speaking truth blessing each other with it. We never know if that's a part of our breakthrough. Hallelujah. All right, unless someone's got questions, comments, stuff like that, I'm done. Yeah, I wanted to share two short things. Um, Speak up, share, brother. Can I give you the mic? Oh, I'll just speak up. But okay. I wanted to share two brief things uh, about that broken love. 
actually said exactly what I was going to say, so I won't do that part of it as far as John 3.16. Like mm -hmm. Love is giving. And it's giving to the extent possible son tried to take over the kingdom and you just didn't want to do what you probably should have done mm -hmm. but you also deserve something that you so you had to kind of they call it a conundrum where it's, yeah. like it's a real difficult problem to solve but yeah I should execute my son but it's my son yep. and I'm his son and I did some atrocities so I have to and now your other son thinking you're weak yeah. Oh, you don't even have judgment no more. Yeah. That's why I'm going to take the kingdom. Yeah. You're not a man anymore. So your son is looking at you like, hmm, pathetic, yeah. such and such. You won't even stand up for your own child. Yeah. And that's a vulnerable situation to be in. Mm -hmm. Because you still have to make, to some extent, real clear judgment. Yeah. And I think what he did in that case was, He's not going to clear the guilty. Not that he told his son, hey, listen, man, go slaughter his brother. But <laughs> let things play out and be it as it may. Yeah. So I think that that's a really, really difficult situation to be in with children and family and trying to make the appropriate decisions. So, and if you haven't been in this scenario, if you have children, no arise or something. And I don't wish that on people, but family, yeah. children. Really difficult decision that has to be sought with counsel. Yeah. Because I don't think that's what it's Yeah, yeah, I agree <laughs> agree with you wholeheartedly and I appreciate you sort of amplifying some of the things you did just now because I, I didn't want to make light of it. I I wanted to show that we was in a he was in a hot spot, right? And sometimes we are. And, 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 and so the, 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 the point I was trying, trying to make is that, is that sometimes you got to kind of close your eyes to some of the familial factors, right? And you got to try to just do what's right. Because, because if I'm looking at it as my, my firstborn, you know, 
these affections I have get involved. If I'm remembering, you know, the Most High blessed me, and, 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 and I need to say, how do I try my best to align him with the blessing that the Most High had given me, if at all possible? And, and this is, so I like this, this, this cauldron that he's in. It's, it's hot. It, the, 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 the metal is molten hot. Because I know that for me, it's these tough spots where the Most High improved me. It wasn't the easy stuff. It, it, it was when it was incredibly difficult because what he taught me to do was to run to him about it. And in the midst of that, I, I, I always understood better how weak my flesh is, how short my thoughts were, how weak my... I, I saw how much I actually needed him and he was like ready to give me what I needed to deal with it. And it developed a sort of uh, um, a pattern in my life where, where you know, and, and Dawid, strangely enough, he, he demonstrated this over and over again beforehand when it was about Goliath, when it was about you know, running from Shaul, as you mentioned. He was like, should I go up against the, the Philistines, etc. And so he had this thing going and it was interrupted by this graphic, grotesque sin that he did. And I want, I want that to be so clear because even, that's why I said apostasy is when you knew and you walked away. Because, because it's, it's possible for a person to kind of be like, a man like Flint. And not they'll say it boastfully like that, but they'll forget to be on guard. So I don't know if anybody here, anybody here ever been in the military? Y'all all escaped it, hallelujah, I love it. But anyway, in the military, the, the, the enemy's camps will often like to, to, to kill the higher ranking ones first. And the reason they do that is because it creates discord and strife and it, it breaks down the, the structure in a way that killing a private doesn't, right? And not that private's lives aren't worth anything, but I'm just saying this because the enemy of our soul, the enemy of the kingdom of Elohim, he loves to find someone who's been walking down that path righteously, doing a good thing. And he'll quote to him Ezekiel chapter, uh, was it 18th or 33, where you know when a righteous man does sin and then none of his righteousness will be remembered. And, and so what he does, and whether the Most High forgives you or not, but what he just did is weakened you because you feel weakened. Because you can't trans traverse this, this, this segment of life and realize that what the Most High has given you, he's given you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I appreciate that, Brother Moshe. Tell that. George, you got your hand up? I keep. Um, yes, sir. Um, as Brother Moshe was... Uh, Speak up a little bit for us. As Brother Moshe was speaking earlier, uh, a couple different things was going through my mind when he got to the part about the V. I started thinking about how... Uh, the sins of the father travel down and go through the generations. Mm -hmm. The sins of the father, uh, the father being the heir of the house, blessings and curses come through the father being the heir of the house. Amen. I started thinking about how his sin followed him as he said he was in a Conundrum. Conundrum, that's the word. Yeah. He was in one of those. And so, if he acted upon that, now, well, let, let's, let's say it like this. If David confronts his son, his sin will come out. Also, if David confronts his son, now the people will know what his son done. With him supposing to be the king, 
which is going to make this kingdom look like, look like with all of this going on inside the kingdom. Yeah. He was trying to preserve the kingdom. Damage control. Damage control. Plus he knew what he did earlier. So Mm -hmm. Why he yeah, the book don't tell us, so we got it. It don't really tell us, but we all see when that first sin happened, mm -hmm. and it was over from there. Domino effect. Yeah, it was over from there. Domino just started. Yeah. Right, but like you said, it took years. Mm -hmm. But when that first happened, mm -hmm. and the way he did it, and the way he sent that man to war and all, it, it was over from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we see what happened with Tamar and his brother and all that stuff. But, but, but yeah, anyway, it just shows how the book reigns true. Amen. Because it says that the sin will follow the father to the third and the fourth generation. It does say a young baby, but it still says about sin. And David wrote it on Taurus and he knew all that. Amen. Amen. I was really thinking about the same exact thing. And it's like, I don't know that there really was a, a, a thing that he could have did to that work it out. A right thing that he could have did. Because he, the thing that you're mentioning here, just other, you know, the, the dysfunction, it just wouldn't have been that one. It had been this one. Yeah. So it's just like you, you really couldn't have fixed it. It don't seem, and it's all seemed to me as like the whole thing is judgment from the what he high. did in, in the first place. Right. Uh, and so it's like you can't, once you take something to a point, you can't undo it. Mm -hmm. There could be forgiveness, but you can't undo things. It's like there's things that you do that can't be done. I think that's the, when we think about sin, mm -hmm. we kind of really have to understand the, the gravity, the weight of it. I mean, because certain things that you do, you know, the Most High will forgive you. I mean, He said He'll forgive you if you come to Him with true. true repentance. Mm -hmm. But it's not. But David is a is a perfect example of you know he's he got the Most High's forgiveness, but the the consequences are just Doesn't unmeasurable, yeah. unmeasurable. Maybe none of that stuff even would have even happened if he didn't do that. You know what I mean? But it's like it was such a domino effect in his life that happened mm -hmm. because of that that sin that he did. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, I agree. Um, I, yeah, that 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 was that was. It, so remember when the baby Bathsheba's first son from him um, is sick, right? He's fasting. He in sackcloth. Because he, and then, and then when he died, you know, he washed his face and got himself together and got a sandwich. And and, and then people were like, what's wrong with you? You know, don't you know your son just died? And he said, he says, paraphrase, he says, well, while he was still alive, the Most High might have had mercy on him. And so he sought his mercy then, right? But in this case, we don't get any witness of him attempting to buffer the situation. Right. And, and, that, and, that's, and that's where the challenge is. He was, he was what do you call it? Uh, uh, council, he was like frozen. He, it's like he didn't know what to do. And, and I get it, right? Because you, know, you could freeze up in a situation. But I only wanted to walk around this enough that the Most High will uh, stir us up to understand some concepts that will be valuable for us mm -hmm. as we walk this walk out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody had to hand up before you, right? Sister did. Chastens those whom he loves. Amen. 
Mm-hmm. Men in that time, and what Jacob did, you know, and men judge according to how they were judged, you know, and you see that over and over and over again that, you know, in, in some situations this may happen, in other situations this may not happen, and they judge right, you know, harshly, like in the case of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Cain and Abel, the Most High could have judged way more harshly. Amen. When I'm judging, judge righteously, judge according to the whole situation, pray for discernment, and ask the Most High to help. And then it made me consider, like, there is safety in the multitude of households. Amen. So I'm not alone. I have my, my husband. I have my sister. I have my, you know, people around me who can help me to consider how to do something justly. Amen. And I think that's the prayer. Amen. 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 I don't know if everyone really heard her, her but, but you know, if I were to sum it up, she, she's she's admonishing us to to remember that you know sometimes we don't know the whole story, and uh, and we can't 
sort of judge other people's judgments, and I'm adding this a little bit, in the sphere of their authority. Because, you know, I mean, if, if I see, you know, George telling his children one thing or another, I don't know the whole thing. I don't know the whole thing. And, 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 and there are lines and boundaries there, right? So if I see him, you know, chasing him with his nine millimeter, I'm like, bro, what's up? What's up? Right? But but you know, if if you know he's if he speak to them sharply because of whatever situation, maybe that was the right thing to do. And then, you know, there, there's this there's this level that we we will never really quite get until um, we, we're translated into the image of his son more completely. Absolutely, completely. And that's whether or not the thing that we're looking at, we're not supposed to walk by sight. And I know this is a little bit of a, anyway. So with the thing we're looking at, we don't always know how this fits into the most high schemes. He, 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 he could have, I mean, for, for all we know, right? And, and, and maybe even, at some level, we do know that Cain killed Abel was a part of the plan. I know it sounds crazy. We don't like it one bit. Paul said something in that Romans letter about um, whether or not uh, if, that's, if this kind of thing is the case, then we can kind of blame Elohim. And he says, Yah forbid, because we got no position. We got no standing to do such a thing, right? It's, it's like, hold up, Doc. You're going to tell me and I made the heavens and the earth and I'm the one that's got... We, we don't have that kind of foothold that we can challenge him. We can say, I don't quite get it. We can say this kind of thing. But at the end of the day, the most high can do whatever he want to do. And, and so, yeah, we need to be mindful of that. Um, but I think that, 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 that we... I agree with my sister that, that we should be praying for that discernment. Praying sometimes, sometimes a, 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 a what does it say? A word in due season, something like this, right? So that goes both ways, the blessing and the curse of it. It's like if I'm if I'm trying to uh, help somebody, I could tell them, you know, this, that, and the other, and they're not coming at the right time, right? It's like, man, I'm trying to get to work. I ain't even really hearing what you're saying. And I, I, I'm stuck in traffic or, you know, I got to pay my rent. And, and it's like, whereas there's this other time when telling them that when they're struggling to pay their rent might be the exact thing they need to hear right then. And oh, oh that we would find ourselves in the way of Hawuak, that that wind be blowing us back and forth like we want. I always often say, I want to put my sail up and let the wind of Hawuak you know, blow me where he desires to blow me, right? It's a beautiful picture, but it ain't exactly how I work yet all the time. <laughs> Sometimes, but, 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 you know, like everything and everybody else, I'm a work in progress. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, so anybody else got something? Oh, sister. Yeah. Now you're going to really have to speak up from back there.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you have something? Jerry had his hand up? My sister had the story. I just had a headline. Uh, all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right. So um, if there's not anything else, then um, go on. Going twice. Come on with it, bro. When you are, so I'm looking at Proverbs 13, Proverbs 15, and it says, verse 10, a divine sentence is in the lips of a king. His mouth transgresses not in judgment. A just weight and balances are Yah's. All the weights of the bag are his. It is an abomination for kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are a delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh of right. And I was thinking about, you were making a couple of things, talks about you know, your son, the difficulties in terms of Ali's case. You probably would have to think about if you were in the seat, Saul's people weren't already feeling you, but then they decided to coalesce with you and become. Now you got this rebellious son that may rile people up and say, hey, yeah, let's go get together with him because my dad is weak. And you still have to make a good decision. And the, your other son, one son who's an immediate sister, then you got the wife of the son who was constantly pointing you in the face like, you let your son do what? Mm -hmm. And you didn't say, like all of this is kind of going on. It's rough, ain't it? Decisions. You get it at all angles. Or at all angles. And I think, just, I'm, I'm closing and landing with this thought of this thing. You have to have discretion and appropriate judgment because you're running government. Yeah. This isn't us four no more. It's like, oh, I only got three kids in the house with me. Yep. You're running a government and everything you do is going to affect everybody. I yeah. mean, your ideas of government affect the whole world. I mean. You run an entire government. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I, uh, all right. You, that picture you just described of all of this stuff coming all
then you got this, 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 that you didn't expect that was going to come from that one thing. Turn the whack a ball. Yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And that stuff, and that stuff can get deep. Amen. Amen. I, um, you know, a few days ago we were doing the Yom Kippur, and, uh, you know, if you look in the book, you see that, you know, there was an offering uh, for the sin of the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. It's like, well, what did it do? And it, it, it's like, it didn't do nothing. But what happened is that the sin in its midst somehow pollutes it. And, and so we, we kind of, we kind of miss this, this, the strength of what this thing sin does. In Hebrews chapter 9, there's a passage that says that the blood of Mashiach cleansed not just everything that was on earth, but in heaven. And people kind of miss it. It's like, what? On heaven? Heaven? What, what in the world? You think, and I say it all, you hear me say, the throne is secure, right? And it always has been. But here's the deal. The sin and the nature of sin is so pervasive. That, that, that it will impact any and everything that it possibly can. And, and, so, and so I say this to agree with you completely and to not, not make us afraid because I don't think we need to be afraid. But, but, but what we need to be is on guard because we're like going up a against a pretty formidable enemy. The Most High has chosen to... Y'all know the Harlem Globetrotter? All right, so the, the Most High has chosen to take some little pygmy people about two feet high against the Harlem Globetrotters and make us win. He says, we're more than conquerors than Messiah Yahushua, right? And, and so it's not because, just like for the nation of Israel back in the day, it's not because y'all were so many, it's not because y'all had all these great accolades, but it was because of this promise that he made and so this is our strength all the time. It's him. It's him. It's him. And without him, the enemy will mow us over. That's why we need to stay so close to the most high. Amen. And, and, that, and that's why that's why the, 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 the groups, the nations, the families that call themselves a part of the family of faith need to press into him in such a manner because that's where our security is. I mean, I'm back to the Sukkot lesson from the other day. That, that, that's the only way that we have that fidelity with the impact that he wants to have in the earth right now. Because the generation that's gone and, and dead, it wasn't his intention to fix it all in their generation. And it may not be his intention to fix it all, but it's his intention clearly to incrementally go closer and closer to the time when he's going to send his son back and say, Enough is enough. So hold fast at a part one. No more delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Try one more time, Les. Maybe what you got to say, sister? All right, then. How about we bless you for another time of fellowship in your word, Abba, and we pray that your Ruach would, would just tamp down all the seeds that have been spread about in us, Abba, that you water them, that you bring forth increase in due season, and we bless you for it, Abba, hallelujah, and amen. amen. All right. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh.